Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again. We are back with our 2023 Frontier here. And what we have now is our full size spare tire. If you're new to the channel, we have our Frontier here. We've got a Dobinson lift. And I picked up some of these Mickey Thompson with the black Rhino rims to go with the lift. Only thing is, I got four of them. Now, we're going off-road and having a little more fun with the truck. I figured I better get a spare. So, I picked up a full-size spare to match what I've got on the truck. And like I said, what these are are Mickey Thompson Baja Bosses. They are 285 70 17. And then these are the Black Rhino Chamber Wheels. So, what we're going to do in this video is see if we can actually fit a full size spare because this ends up being a 33 inch tire under the truck. The stock wheels I believe were a 31. So you're gaining a couple inches. These are a little bit thicker. It's got more weight to it, but I'm going to see if we can actually tuck it underneath the truck here. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. We'll have to pop the center cap off of the wheel because that's gotta be out of the way but we're gonna see if we can fit it under the truck. So let's get at it. All right, so if you have these specific set of wheels or similar, the cap is just three little hex screws. It shows six, but three of them are fake. So you just gotta remove the three and obviously keep that somewhere because you may wanna use it eventually. And then this little thing actually comes with the truck and the original tire. It's just a little piece of rubber, and you'll see why we use this a little bit better in a second. But basically, the face of the tire will be pointing upwards when we pull it up under the truck, and this will sit right in here. Reason that is, I didn't know what this was for originally, but you sit it there, and then this will be flat underneath the truck. And basically what it does is when you lift it up, the slack from the chain will sit on here, and not only does it stop the chain from rattling around and wrecking the face of your wheel, but it'll cut down on the noise. You won't have that jingling in the back of your truck. So again, that'll sit in there and the chain will kind of come down with the plate underneath. And then when you pull it up, the slack of the chain comes out and it'll rest on here and stay out of the way. And you will not have a chain dangling underneath your truck trying to hook on stuff. And next, what you'll need is go and get your spare tire removal kit, and that's behind the driver or passenger rear seat. So driver's side, go behind the seat in the back. This little black bag is there. Get all the parts. I did a video on this separately. If you want to watch that, go back and check out that video. But it's basically just a bunch of extensions. One's got a T on the end, and this is your handle for the end. What you're going to do, if you come under here on the tailgate, you have a little hole right here that goes through like so in there it'll go into the little spot underneath the truck you put the handle on the end crank it and it'll lower and raise the chain so i'll get under there because now that we don't have a spare tire in this video i can actually show you a little bit of a closer look how this works all right so underneath the truck this is the inside of the hole where we fed it through if you come over here this little guy that kind of looks like a horn. If you look up in there, you have a little bolt and it's got a slot for this T to fit in. So you'll fit it in just like so. And then when you crank it, the chain here raises and lowers. You can see the chain going up right there. I have this all twisted and mangled right now because it was hanging down like this. That's what I said. You don't want the chain hanging underneath. But now that we got the spare tire, I can unwind all this so it's not going to bind. All right, so now that I've got it all loose and hanging like it should be, it's actually very easy to turn this with no weight of the wheel on there. I can actually do it just with my hand. You can see as this turns, the chain goes up, it loops in there, and then your little plate starts to lower. And then that side of the chain is just anchored right there in that bolt. One thing I do recommend, you can see how this thing's getting pretty grimy. I'd say probably once a year, maybe more if you go off-road quite a bit. Get under here, whatever you want, brake cleaners, whatever. Just spray this in, clean it all up, lube it up if you can get in there. Just like you can see the dirt like that, try to keep it off. But as you can see right now, we're just going to drop this thing down. It'll go 
You don't have to go all the way to the ground, but you want to be low enough that you can get this plate into our rim. And then we'll pick her up and see if she fits. All right, so I've got her all, all the way down. You can see what I did is I came all the way down and just left it maybe like an inch or two off the ground just to keep the or the tension on the chain. So then when we feed it through the wheel, when you start cranking it, all the slack will end up on the top. Whereas if you have slack on the bottom and say it's under there like this, when you start cranking it up, all that slack is going to stay underneath. And again, you're going to end up with the chain dangling underneath the wheel. All right, so getting this thing under the truck. And funny thing is, now that I cleaned the dirt off this little thing, it actually tells you right there, place this on your wheel before you put the chain through. So we'll grab the chain, get it up top, place it in the middle. I don't have enough slack because the tire's still popping out the back of the truck right now. So we'll just push it in, get it roughly where it's got to be. And then again, you just take this, poke it through, drop it through the center of the tire, keep the slack up top. And now you can see, that's why I said, keep the slack on the chain, because now this is dangling underneath the wheel, which makes your plate that picks up the wheel stay flat. If it's on the ground, you might pick it up, it'll be on a little bit of an angle. Or if you hook it on something weird, it could end up going sideways. You want that thing to be flat, because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank this thing back up and it's gonna slowly pick up the wheel. So now that we got the wheel under there, you saw me just drop it with your fingers, but now of course you got the weight of the wheel. So this is where the little handle comes in. This is to remove your original spare tire, but you just turn it. And you may want to use two hands just so it doesn't wobble it back and forth like it's doing to me. Just keep one hand to guide it and you literally just keep turning. Eventually, when the slack runs out and you're starting to pick up the weight of the wheel, this thing will get a little heavier. We can crank it all the way up and see if she works. All right, now as you can see, we got her up there. All you need is your finest pair of Crocs. Kind of MacGyver it a little bit, maneuver it around. You can see behind your hitch here, you do have a little bit of room. For you guys that want to maybe cram 35s in here, I would say, yeah, you could probably fit them. You got about two inches of space there still, inch and a half at least. Only thing you probably notice as it went up, it was getting stuck on the sway bar so wiggle it with your feet get it around the sway bar and on the back side here same thing you're close to the diff but you do have probably an inch and a half maybe two inches there as well so 35s I would say you could probably fit under here and then here's a look at just how that bracket holds the wheel underneath and then again that little rubber thing is on the top so when you crank it up the chain now is all sitting on top of the wheel so that keeps the noise down you don't have chain hanging down here swinging it's not going to scratch up your rim underneath so it's all good looks like she fits and then fitment wise for the width you can see it's pretty much in line maybe just slightly lower because of the aggressive sidewall but just about the same as your hitch so if you're going off-road or doing whatever 
and you're going to bottom out on the hitch, you may hit the wheel, but I very highly doubt that. Should be good how it is. And now we are good to go. We've got it under there. If we get a flat, if we can't patch it up, we got the spare sitting right here ready to go. So there you go, guys. She fits. If you want a 35 under there, I'm going to say, yep, she'll probably fit. It'll be a little bit thicker, of course, depending on what size tire you're going with. May hang down a little bit more, but at this angle, you can see it's tucked up just a little bit higher than the hitch on the back of the truck if you're wanting distance wise. And then just keep in mind when you're cranking this thing back up through the little hole there, make sure you get a little bit of tension on it. It will hold it, but you don't want this thing to have any play or rattle or movement in it. You're going to end up wrecking something and you don't want it swinging side to side because it is fairly close on either end as well. But 33s fit no problem. Like I said, you can see in the video, a 35 probably would fit as well, depending how crazy you're going with your build. So hopefully this helped you out. Like and subscribe. Hopefully we catch you in another video. And thanks for watching this one.